Hi guys, hope all is well. Today I'll take a closer look at the house that Ray Cappy designed and built for his family in Pacific Palisades, California between 1965 and 1967. Ray Cappy was an American architect and founding director of SciArc, the Southern California Institute of Architecture. Takashi Yanai wrote, Los Angeles is a city of houses. With more than 500,000 homes, 85% of the city is zoned for single-family dwellings. Traditionally, LA is where young architects cut their teeth and hone their craft. Consider Rudolf Schindler's King's Road House, the Ims House, or the John and Tenzel's sponsored case study houses. They represent a long lineage of pioneering, forward-thinking houses to celebrate LA's temperate climate in inventive spirit. The house Ray Cappy designed for himself and his family in 1965 is located squarely into that continuum. In 1996, it was recognized as the youngest house to be designated a cultural historic monument by the city of Los Angeles. Much of the genius of the house can be credited to Capi's response to its challenging site in Rustic Canyon, characterized by its steep slope and underground springs. Capi was forced to scrap an original design when it was determined that the site conditions were more difficult than the geological report had shown. He quickly came up with a second design that sits more literally on the wet sloping site. Six massive concrete towers sit on concrete pads totaling 600 square feet. Their placement creates order on a seemingly incomprehensible site. These concrete towers are spanned primarily by 24-inch beams placed to adequately clear the land. The stepped massing parallels the street, but at a 45-degree angle to the steep slope, resulting in a cascading series of seven distinct levels that levitate over the landscape. The levels are linked into a continuously unfolding experience by stairs and bridges. This structural logic responds to the site in such a way that the house is inseparable from the topography, making Capi's architecture as much a symbiotic partner to the landscape as it stands in counterpoint. The result is a masterpiece that negotiates a space somewhere between the pure structural logic of post and beam with a more lyrical sculptural solution. Capi himself was quick to point out that he had always preferred what he called the additive process of design, rather than the reductive method of carving away at a mass to create space. He deliberately assembled and composed an element at a time, each decision building on the previous. It is this additive process and its responsiveness to the land that sets the poetics of the house in motion. Additionally, some of his most impactful and elegant decisions were based on practicality. Although Capi clearly owed a debt to the modern masters ahead of him, Neutra, Schindler and even Wright, he also confessed an admiration of Japanese architecture, especially the palaces of Kyoto. He didn't visit Japan until well after his house was built but an affinity for wooden construction and the relationship between interior space and nature cannot go unnoticed. Like Schindler, who learned about Japanese architecture so adeptly from his employer Wright, Capi absorbed whatever he knew of Japanese architecture from afar, mostly through images and books. Much like the architects of Japan's post and beam structures, Capi was interested in modular systems and a fidelity to the logic of good construction. And like those masters, rather than being a slave to the rules, Capi masterfully and deliberately synthesized and pursued that language like a writer uses words. In this case, the house is both an essay and a poem. The rationale of the system responds to the challenging idiosyncrasies of the site. The result is a masterful tension between the rational and the lyrical, a work of architecture that is at once disciplined and deliberate, yet is free and seems effortless. 
The main living space is comprised of four distinct levels that span 45 feet from end to end. Set at different elevations, sometimes connected and sometimes disjoint, the dialectic between structural logic and a sense of lyrical play invites examination, drawing the eye to trace lines and space in an attempt to solve what makes the whole so delightful. Stairways and ledges are without rails, heightening a sense of freedom and flow. The master bedroom wing spins off the main space on the northeast corner of the site. The children's bedrooms are located at the southwest corner of the house. The studio below the main living area was designed for Capi's expanding practice. A certain flexibility was built into the children's wing so it could accommodate an expanded office in the future. The three south towers contain the main stair and two bathrooms, while the master bath, a study within the master suite and an eating nook of the kitchen cooking island, are located in the three northern towers. In combination with the concrete and glass, the Douglas fir glue lamps, redwood decks and sidings, thick uh, built-ins and oak floors create a unique composition. Natural light is introduced uh, through skylights over the concrete volumes, clerestories and floor-to-ceiling glass, masterfully positioned to frame views of the canyon trees, blurring the distinction between indoors and outdoors and lyrically revealing the structural integrity of the house. The landscape adds character to the house, it is not so much design as it is a happy result of uh, circumstances, with the exception of the hardscape. The bamboo, planted by neighbors when the newly built 4,000 square feet Capi house loomed over theirs, crossed over to Capi's property where it now looks completely at home. Likewise, vines and other plants have proliferated without plan. Joining the existing sycamore and eucalyptus trees, oak trees define the upper terrace where a pool and cabana area were added in 1980. Four distinct and unique outdoor spaces augment the interior. The architecture is uh, further enhanced by furniture design by Capi himself, with the exception of some Im species and a collection of art, large paintings and collages which were created by his grown children. The house served as a prototype for 10 more custom houses on challenging rustic canyon sites. The Ray Capi archive of drawings, uh, models and papers is housed at the Getty Research Institute. If you're interested in hearing more about the house, uh, listen to the conversation that Capi had with Jim Kuno at the link in the description box below. Ask uh, for the book with photographs by Yoshio Futagawa, published by GA at your local bookstore. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.